What is a covering? A covering is something you use to hide. Are you with me? As I said, you're gonna you're gonna allow me to go through my notes so that I can go very fast today. A covering is something you use to hide, to conceal. To mask, to camouflage something. So that's a covering. It's something you use to, to bury something, to disguise something. A covering is something that you use to protect, to defend. I wrote some words so I can, to shield, to safeguard, to, to shelter, to secure, to cover, to watch over. So, a covering is not only something you use to hide, it's also something you use to what? To defend or to protect. We have a lot of physical or natural covering. For instance, your clothes are your covering. Use your clothes to cover yourself for against weather or what have you. We have an umbrella. An umbrella can be considered as what? A covering. What else? What else? A blanket. A blanket can be considered a covering. What else? A head can be considered as a covering. What else? Huh? A tent can be considered a covering. Yes. Glasses, mama, can be considered like a covering. What else? Your shoes can be considered like a covering. A house is a covering. Protect us against weather and sun and the wind. When you go to Africa, we have what we call mosquito nets. Mosquito nets. If you go to cheap hotels really in Africa, you find mosquito nets. But if you go to, if you spend at least $80, $150, you get a proper. You don't need those kind of things. You see, as much as we have physical covering, like I'm saying the blankets, all that, we also have spiritual covering. It means in the realm of the spirit, when we talk about spiritual covering, just like a natural covering, is something you use to hide yourself in the realm of the spirit. It's something you use to defend yourself in the realm of the spirit. Are you with me? Because you need to understand if a witch, I use witchcraft for instance, if they want to bewitch you, sometimes they want to cast a disease upon you or any malady or bad luck, what they will do they need to locate you first in the realm of the spirit. That's what they do. They're going to locate you first in the realm of the spirit. They'll cast a curse or that disease on your spirit first. Then it will manifest itself in the body. So now when you have a spiritual covering, you are able to conceal yourself or hide yourself so that when they look for you in the realm of the spirit, they can't find you. When they look for you, they can't locate you. I don't know if you ever, you ever heard a testimony in Africa where by someone said, I used to be a witch. I went to look for this man of God. I went to his house. I couldn't find his house. Or oh, I found there was a river. And I heard this man is under covering. He's hiding himself. You can't find him. 
Are you with me? You, 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 you can't discover him. He's, he's a hidden in the realm of the spirit. Or you go to a realm of the spirit, you hear testimony again, you go to attack a man of God. He say, I tried to attack this man of God. Suddenly, I saw fire appear to me, and that fire burned my witchcraft. Have you ever heard of that? It means that in the realm of the spirit, this man has a covering. And not only the covering covers you, the covering also protects you. Are you with me? Now, my question is, is uh, before I continue, do you have a covering? So, there are different kind of covering I'm saying. First of all, there is, is there are different kind of spiritual covering. Are you with me? The first spiritual covering all of us we need, it is God. Can you say, I need God? Can you say, I need God? Now, let's read this one. We're going to read very quickly. If you're going to be fast, I'll read on the screen. Otherwise, I'll use my own notes. Psalm 91. Ah, yes. I think I'm going to work with you today. It's fast. We're going to read in concert. Ready, go. He who dwells in the secret place of Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. Now, you only turn if I tell you turn. You, today, you are very fast. I will say of the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I trust. Look at the word the Bible says refuge. Look at the word fortress. Refuge is a place you go to hide yourself. In Israel, they used to have what to call cities of refuge. The first church I ever built, I called it city of refuge in South Africa. It means that when you are in trouble, you can go to the city of refuge. The fortress is a strong place whereby you go to hide yourself in time of war. So the Bible says, when you, you abide under the shade of the Almighty, the Lord becomes what? Your refuge. It's another word, God becomes what? Your spiritual covering. Verse number three. He said what? When God is your spiritual covering, he does what? Let's read in concert. He shall deliver you from the snare of the faller and of the perilous pestilence. Now, what is a snare of the faller? A faller is a man who hunts birds. So now the Bible says God is able to, to deliver you from the trap of the enemy. Now, you know the way they, they hunt birds, they just hunt them suddenly. I remember I used to have a friend, not really a friend, uh, it was older than me, he used to hunt birds. So I'm going to go with him, he will have a net. You see, a net that they use for birds, even if you can't see it. It's so dark, so the bird does not understand, he finds himself already caught. It does not mean how big the bird. So what the Bible is telling us, when God is your spiritual covering, you can't be taken by surprise. I say you can't be taken by surprise. The devil can't wake up at night to want to destroy your life. He wake up at night to want to destroy your family. The devil is a liar. God is your spiritual covering. So the first spiritual covering you need is God Almighty. Then he said from the perilous pestilence. Pe pestilence is like what we had COVID. How many of you know COVID? Yeah, these are pestilences. When we, this day we have, uh, what you call it, by calling it uh, MP, monkey pox, you know, something. Do you hear about that? They say it's big in Africa, but it actually started in Europe. <laughs> you know, people have a way of shifting things. Started in Europe, they say, oh, it's, it came from Congo. No, it came from Denmark, amen? Verse 4, yeah, it came from Denmark. <laughs> let, let read verse, verse 4, let read. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wing you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. So look, the Bible says God will cover you with his feathers. Another word, God will, will be your covering is a bird. You see a bird, what he does, when he has cheeks, he covers the cheeks against the hawks, the eagles. So he, what he's doing, he's providing shelter for them, he's being a shield for them, he's being a protection for them. So the Bible says, now when we make 
God our covering, what's going to happen? God covers us against the plains of darkness. I don't know if you don't know, but the Bible says the devil walks around as a roaring lion. The devil always already wants to destroy your life. When you are sleeping, one will destroy your family, want to destroy your children, you want to destroy your finances, you want to destroy your health. But when it comes, you find God is covering you. I says God is covering you. Verse number five, let's continue. Let me read it. He say, You shall, oh, come on, let me read it. Say, ready, go. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. It means that while you are sleeping, you are snoring, there are a lot of things that take place. Activity of witchcraft, witches and wizards. There are some people are meeting in water, some people are meeting in the forest, they're meeting in different places. While you don't know, while you might be sitting there, there's, there might be someone who took your name into a witch doctor. You don't know. Someone who's cursing you under your breath. You don't know. Someone who wants your life destroyed. You don't know. But the Bible says you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. It does not matter why the devil comes at night or by day. You are covered. Say, I am covered. Say, I'm covered. Verse number five. Let's continue. Six. Let's read in concert. Ready to go. No of the pestilence that walks in darkness, no of the destruction that lay waste at the new day. I want to know this day. The Bible said there are pestilence that walks, diseases that walks. It means that a disease is a spirit. So there's a spirit of disease that the enemy can send in the world. It comes in the form of a germ. It comes, they call it, they might call it COVID or monkeypox or something affecting people's life, taking people's life, destroying family, devastating nations. But the Bible says when this particular spirit that brings disease is walking at night in the place of darkness, you shall not be afraid. Oh my God. And the Bible says, oh, no of the destruction that lays waste anew. The verse number seven. Let's read in concert. Ready, go. A thousand will, and uh, and uh, they shall not come near you. You need to understand because most of us we have not yet internalized the concept of the covenant. You don't understand that you are a son, a daughter, and the kingdom of God. When we come in the place, they say, but everyone is falling sick, Papa. Everyone, but you are in the kingdom of God. You are a son and daughter of the Most High God. The Bible says, thousand fold in your left hand side, ten thousand on your side. And that way, things might be happening around you, but they're not supposed to touch you. Why? Because you are covered. Say, I'm covered. Psalm covered. You are under the covering of mighty God. That's why the Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why? Not because you prayed. Not because you fasted. Not because you sow a seed. Because God is your covering. Say I'm covered. Oh, he said it will never come near you. Only with your eyes. So when people are talking, oh my God, there is a disease. People are dying. I don't know what's going to happen to me. You tell them you and who? Because me, I'm, I'm covered under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me continue verse number 8. The Bible says, only with what? Only with you what? With your eyes you will look and see the reward of the wicked. Verse number 9. Because, let me read the concept. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. Ten. No what? Come on, no what? No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Say sickness will never come near my house. Or say no disease in my house. You see, it should be a concern to us when this thing happen. No other way around. Because children of God, we walk around with this mentality, or oh, apostle, you know, it's just a flu season. But the Bible says, no what? No plague, no sickness. Another way, you are exempted. Where plagues is going around, where sickness are going around, where they're talking about, uh, I don't know, flu season, you say flu season is for other people. Me, I'm under the covering of the Almighty God. When they say this season, there's a diarrhea thing going on, there's a coughing thing going on, 
there's I don't know migraine going on. You say, I don't care what is going on, but because I'm a covenant with El Shaddai, he's made, he has made a promise that he shall be, yes, I've made him my dwelling place. He's going to be what? He's going to cover me. No plague. Say no plague. Say no sickness. Say no disease. And these things, people of God, we need to internalize them. It must become a mindset. Not when you say you find everything normal. People are sick, you are sick. People are confused, you are confused. People are broke, you are broke. So there's no difference between the non-covenant people and you. But you are a son, a daughter, the Most High God. God is, has made a commitment to be your spiritual covering. Are you with me? Now, I want you to notice the book of Job chapter number one. Number one. Look what the Bible says. Reading comes say, ready go. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand, and he possesses and have increased in the land. Now, this is Job. And I want to show you, it's made that when it comes to spiritual covering, when you are covered by God, the devil can't touch you. Here is Job. He's minding his business. He's serving God. He's trusting God. He's covenant with God. He has made God his, his a hiding place, his dwelling place. Now, the Bible says the devil, God came to the, he told the devil, have you seen my servant Job? He said, are you serving you because you have blessed him? You have put a hedge around him. Now, you tell me, how did the devil know that Job had a hedge, a protection around him? It means that the devil came already. When you are minding your business, I want you to know, the devil is always checking on you. Checking on your children. Checking your family. Looking for how you're going to break your heart, mess up your marriage, mess up the church, mess up your, I don't know, your finances, your health. He's always checking. But when he came to Job, he saw Job was covered. Some covered. Some covered. I want you to know, people of God, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. I say you are covered by the blood of Jesus. The angel of God is around your life. They are around your business. They are around your children. Therefore, the devil can come by day. He can come by night. You find you covered. See, I'm covered. I want you to know, people, that every single person who was covered by God was secured. If you are covered by God, that's why every day you walk out and say, Lord, I thank you for your protection over my life. I thank you for protection over my family. I thank you for protection over my children. Because I want you to understand when God covers you, you are covered. No devil can touch you. No devil can touch your family. Joseph found himself in Egypt. While he was in Egypt, can you imagine falsely accused of rape? But even though forcing accused because he made God his refuge, he made God his secret place, guess what? He was covered, protected. And not only that, God promoted him. Are you with me? When God covers you, people of God, you are covered. Look at Moses. Moses was a Hebrew, a Jew. And there was a law. They said they are going to kill all male children who are Jewish, who are Hebrew. But Moses, guess what? Because he was under the covering of mighty God, he was covered to the point not only was protected, he was defended by the very people who passed the law. Can you say I'm covered? Say I'm covered. Say my family is covered. Or say my family is covered. Say my mind is covered. My health is covered. My children are covered. Say I'm covered. People of God, I want you to understand every single person who was covered with God, they experienced spiritual covering. David, before he came, he became a king, Saul wanted to kill him. He said, I'm going to kill this boy. He hated David. He wanted David dead because he knew David was going to become a king. Guess what? He tried all his best, but could not kill David. Why? Because David was covered. Can you say I'm covered? What about, what about, what about Daniel? Daniel, they were thrown in a lion's den. Fairness of fire. But because God was their spiritual covering, guess what? They will not, de will not destroy. Can you say, I can't be destroyed? Say, I can't be destroyed. What about the children of Israel in Babylon? The children of Israel under, under was it Esther? Madoke came out with a plan that wanted to destroy all the Jewish people. But they called on God. 
Because God was their covering, they were protected. Can you say I'm protected? Say I'm protected. What about Ruth? Ruth was a foreigner in this particular country. And of course, the other uh, young ladies were jealous of her, but because she entered a covenant with Naomi, and she was under their covering, what happened? God became a spiritual covering. Not only that, she not suffer in the strange land, but God promoted her. God blessed her. God made a great, great, great mother of Jesus because she's under spiritual. Can you say I'm covered? Say I'm covered. People, God, I want us to understand that when God is your spirit, you are covering, you are covered. That's why every day you wake up in the morning, you begin to declare, Father, your covering is over my life. It's over my family. Oh, it's over my children. It's over my health. And everything I do, everything I touch, I'm covered. Look what the Bible says in Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Let's read in concert. Ready, go. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain will build it. Unless the Lord guards a city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So in other words, if God does not provide this covering over your life, you can never survive demonic attack. You can never survive the plane of the enemy. You can never survive the strategy of hell. So you need God to be your covering. And David is telling us, unless, you know, people are wasting their time, they are wasting their resources. Look at how many, how many, how many, much of, how many, money, money, money. I told you how much of money. How much United Nation is spending to try to have peace. So that Israel can have peace. Lebanon can have peace. So they want peace in Sudan. They want peace in the DRC. They want peace in Angola. They want, but they can't find peace. Why? Because unless the Lord build a house, those who labor, labor in vain. People of God, if you want to see security in your finances, security in your health, security in every area of your life, you must invoke, you must invite the covering of God. Can you say, I desire this covering? And the Bible says when you have this covering, you are secure. You are in safety. Why? Because when you have the covering of God, you can go to sleep. Why? Because the Bible says, he who watches over Israel will never sleep or slumber. Let me read it. I love that one. Psalm 121, I believe. Psalm 121. Let's, uh, let's read in concert. Ready to go. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall never... Oh, read it again loud and clear. And let's go to verse number five. What does it say? Let's read. The Lord is what? Your keeper. The Lord is your shed at right hand. Verse number six. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Verse number seven. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Verse number eight. The Lord shall preserve you going out, your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Say, I'm covered. Another way, when you go to China, don't be afraid. God will cover you. When you go to France, God will cover you. When you go to Africa, God will cover you. Say, God is my covering. Let the devil gather themselves. Let demon, witches, and wizards. Let them do what they want to do. You are under divine covering. And when God covers you, you are covered. When God protects you, you are protected. Sound protected. Sound protected. Witches and wizards can do what they want to do. Do what they want to do. Say what they want to say. Release whatever. I don't know. Curses and whatever. But I'm under a strong covering. It's a covering of El Shaddai. Or say I'm covered. Say I'm covered. Every day you wake up, you must walk in awareness. I'm covered. Why? Because I'm a covenant with God. Why? Because Jesus shed his blood for me. Why? Because God loves me. Can you say I'm covered? Or do this, I'm covered. I do this, I'm covered. I want everyone to do this, I'm covered. When you go to your house today, go in your house, begin just to do this. Say, devil, look at me, I'm covered. You go to witch, tell them, I'm covered. Wizard, I'm covered. You can't touch me. I'm a no-go zone. I'm covered. Hidden and protected. Say, I'm a hidden and protected. 
So the first covering we need, you and I, people of God, it is God Almighty. And I don't know if we're going to have time to look at what can cause you to, to lose that covering. Because some people might be saying, but Papa, you're talking about this, but I know of uh, believers who are going through so much. Because there are a lot of things, even though discovery is made available to us, but we, can, we might not be experiencing the benefit of the covering because of either disobedience or rebellion. Because we need to understand. Ah, there's so much to say. You know, when we talk about the will of God, there are five kinds of will of God. It's what we call the absolute will of God. It means that what God expects everyone to do. God does not expect anybody, all of us to lie or anyone to cheat, anyone to whatever, fornication, whatever people kill, whatever you know. That's the absolute will of God. You can be a prophet, apostle, a deacon, a church member, Sunday school. We are all called to obey God. It's the absolute will of God. Now we have what we call the relative will of God. Can you say relative? Relative will of God is what God has spoken to you. Now some people don't understand. They will try to make a relative will of God a absolute will of God. God can speak to you. He say, I don't want you to put makeup. I've seen people like that. God tells them, don't put makeup. Then they come to church. They want to make it a law. Go if you wear makeup. You're going to go to hell. No. If you put makeup, you're going to go to hell. That's a relative will of God. God has spoken to you. Are you with me? So as long as you are in the you are you are doing a relative will of God, you are under his covering. Let's say you don't know because disobedience is what will cause you not to enjoy the blessing of your covering. Let's say God tells you, okay, you didn't know sister, let's say well, sister Catherine is a witch. You didn't, you didn't know. So you go there, you eat her food, you eat her food, but you don't know her food being bewitched. But because you did not know, you are still under covering. God will protect you. But if God tells you, don't ever eat at Catherine's house, now you know. So if God tells you, don't eat at Catherine's house, because God knows every time you go there, she bewitches the food, she, she calls on demons, and God says, don't eat it. The day you're going to eat that food, you are no longer under divine covering. Because you have violated the relative will of God for you. So begin, be, before you know it, what the activity of witchcraft began to happen in your life. Not because God could not protect you, because God spoke to you. God told you, don't go to that person. You went there, as a result now, you begin to suffer. Are you with me? That's not the purpose of teach, uh, that teaching today. We also have a permissive will of God. Can you say permissive? Permissive will of God is what you want, but God doesn't want it. Have you seen sometimes the children of Israel? God said to them, no, I'm going to be your king. They said, no, we don't want you to be our, our king. We want to have a king like any other nation. God said, uh, Samuel said to them, listen, you guys, you don't know what you are talking about. God is your king. They said, no, we want a king we're going to see like any other nation. So God said, that's fine. It's not my perfect will. But because you want it, I'll let you do it. Are you with me? That's what we call what? permissive. God allows, but it's not his perfect will. For instance, you find certain people who say, oh, my, me, me, I just want to marry Jimmy. Just Jimmy. And God, they come for counseling and say, Jimmy is not good for you. No, no, no. Look at him. Look at his smile. Look at, I just, when I see Jimmy, I just, you just want Jimmy. Just Jimmy. I say, girl, ah, when I see his muscle, oh my God, he kills. God said, Jimmy is not good for you. But when you say, me, I just want Jimmy, God is going to allow you. It's not this perfect way, permissive. He allows you to marry Jimmy. Then tomorrow you come for counseling, your hand is broken. What happened? Those muscles broke your hand. You come to realize the man is abu <laughs> abuses you and does all sorts of things. So it, this kind of thing, disobedience, that robs us from the, the blessing of the covering. But you are not in the disobedience. I say you are not in disobedience. Say I'm covered. So the first covering I'm trying to tell you, this was just in passing. The first covering I'm saying is God. And the second covering is men. Men can be a covering to you. Because some people say, no, I'm covered by God, that's all. No, men can cover you. 
Look at Acts chapter 27, verse whatever is there. Acts 27, 23. Let me read because they're ready to go. For they re- Paul, let me read because they're ready to go. For there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord God belong, whom I serve. Let me read again. For, for there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. Verse 24. Saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. Indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Notice that. They are traveling. They are going through crisis. They are going through storm. The boat is, is about to be destroyed. Now, God spoke to Paul. He said, Paul, all these people have granted them to you. In other words, because you are in this boat, these people are going to be protected. Now, it's not because these people prayed. They did not fast. There's no ask God. It's not even God protecting them. God said to Paul, just because of your presence, your presence serving them as a covering. And guess what? Even death. When death came, he saw Paul there. When he was about to take these particular people in the realm of the spirit to go see the covering of Paul upon them. As a result, even death could not touch them. So men can serve you as a covering. So you can't say, no, me, I only have God. No, you can have men and women serving you as a covering. We are going to see later how Apostle Paul say, when I go, you know, wolves will come after you and sort of things. So I want us to understand people of God. Yes, God can cover you. But men also can serve as a covering. Now, when it comes to covering, I want us to know that there are different forms of covering. Amen? I'm just going to speak about the first form today because, we, like I said, six weeks teaching. The first form of covering is family. Can you say family? Listen to me, people of God. Family is the first institution, the first organization God has ever built. It was a family, man and a woman. So when I'm talking about a, a man, it's a family, I'm talking about a family that's made up of what? A mother and a father. So when you have a couple and children are, they are the result of that couple, they, these children already, they have a natural covering because they have a father and a mother. Are you with me? That's why as parents, as people of the covenant, we have to be, be careful of how are we bringing children into this world. The children must come under the covering of the covenant. It means that we take a man, a woman in agreement, marriage agreement, then they start having children. These children are automatically the benefit of the covering. It means that, you, do you know a, a witch or a wizard we never touch a child who's under a father and mother. They automatically under a covering. You can come. We've seen testimony. People are try, are try. They can't because mom and dad already they are a covering in that particular family. So when the first uh, the, the the form of the first form of covering is a family itself, what because God is, is the one who established marriage. As a result, now is covering that particular marriage, and the children who are coming out of marriage are already covered. So you can't come and uh, bewitch them. You can't come and and uh, trouble them. You can't come and uh, confuse them. Why? Because they're already under divine covering. That one encourage us if you are single. Before all of us made mistakes in the past, but listen to me. Before you get married, or before when you find a partner, you must do it in a way that God has instructed us in the Bible. Don't just pick up someone, oh, I love him. No. If they are not born again, they are not a Christian, they are not good for you. Oh. I said they are not good for you. The Bible says, do not be unequally what? 
yoked together with unbeliever. First Corinthians 6 14. So we need to understand when I'm entering a covenant with someone, this particular person must be a child of God. Why? Because when we are under the covering of God, I'm married to my wife, our children are automatically under our covering because we are in alignment with the God who instituted marriage. Now, within marriage, the first person who brings the covering at the home is the man. Man was created in the image of God. So man is the one who's responsible. Listen to me, man. You are responsible for your home. Because I, I, I've realized that like, some men, when things are going wrong, he started looking at, he look at the woman and he said, look at your daughter, look at your son. You are the man, you are responsible. It means that as a man, you are the one who's in charge for the spiritual covering of your house. I've, I've seen men where they are sending their wife, oh, you can go to church. They think a church thing is a, a women thing. It's a man thing. You can't be a man, you are sitting in your house. You sleep all night till morning. No, you must wake up at night as a man. Begin to pray for your family. When the house is collapsing, you are responsible. You can't say, oh no, this my daughter is crazy. This my... No, it's me that the devil is attacking your home. You have to learn to pray. Why my son is like this? Why my daughter is like this? Why my home is like this? Where there's no money in this house? Where there's no job? As a man, you are responsible. Begin to pray until you drive the spirit out of your house. I know men won't say amen to me. <laughs> you are responsible to bring a covering. Yes. The first covering of the house is a man, a husband. God has given us responsibility to make sure that our home functions. It means that when, when things are not working at home, remember when, when Adam and Eve committed sin. You notice God came in the garden. You know what God, God said? He didn't ask Eve. Eve is the one who ate the fruit. Now, normally God should have to, uh, spoken to the woman. Why did you do that? God came to the man. Why? Because even though men and women, we are equal, man is the first among the equal. We are responsible and accountable to God for the spiritual life in our homes. You are the one who's supposed to be saying to your wife, we have to pray before we sleep. You are the one who have to be saying to your wife, listen, we are going to church today. <laughs> because you are responsible. Ah, men, they don't like that. I have to pass that. <laughs> I said, I can just see men say, Apostle, we loved you, but now you are start talking about this thing. We don't love you anymore. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's go to Psalm 128 very quickly. Psalm 120. I want you to notice this one. Let me read the concert. Ready, go. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Verse number two. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, it shall be well with you. Verse number three. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in every heart of your house. Your children like olive plants around your table. Verse number four. Behold, that shall be the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Verse number five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse number six. Yes, may you see your children, children, peace be upon Israel. Now, if you read this particular scripture, you notice the Bible talks about the man the woman and the children so when it comes to a spiritual covering the one who covers their home first is a man but in some times you find some homes men are just irresponsible they don't know their place in the house they don't know what they're supposed to be doing so in that particular time a woman even though is not a responsibility. She can take a, a place, of, she can become a covering for the house through her, her, her intercession. Because the home must always be covered. Now I will show you in the Bible how many women have, have, have um, first of all, let's let go back. I want to ask to read something. Ah, there, there's so much to say. That's why I'm rushing. I don't even know how. I can't finish it. But I'll finish somewhere. 
time I have for. Okay, let's read. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter number 20, 25, verse 21. Genesis 25, 21. Let's read Genesis. Uh, let's read in concept. Go. Now, Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now, what you notice here, Rebekah was barren. She could not have children for 19 years. But notice the Bible didn't say Rebekah went to pray. No. When there is something wrong at your home, listen to me, man. I know you're going to hate me today. It is your responsibility. Look here. Barrenness is not always, it's not always you can't have children. They can't be buried. They, maybe nothing's working. That's what barrenness is. You know, family is not working. Children are not working. Finance is not working. Health is not working. You know, as a man in a house, just like Isaac, he took his responsibility as a man. He said, I can't see my home die like this. I can't see living with a woman for 19 years, no children. What happened? The Bible says he pleaded with the Lord. It means he took the case of his wife, brought it to God, and God answered his wife. How? Through the prayer of the man. Now, you are a man in the house. You don't pray. You don't lead devotional. The church, in fact, So when that happens, you, as we read in Psalm there, you as a woman, now you need to take your place. When you see your home is going down, you say, this man is like a Naboth. You know Naboth, what it means? He's a fool. That's what the Bible says. This man is Naboth. Is it Naboth of Naboth? Is it Naboth, mama? Naboth there. He's a fool. So what are you going to do? When you marry to a Naboth, you have to pray. You have to seek God. Bring a covering. Because God already is covering you. You have a covering of God. But because God has put you in marriage, the man is not doing his uh, role, uh, you know, uh, uh, playing his role, you as a woman. You know, that's why you see today, I'll talk about that later. I want you to see, see let, let me read this one. Ah, yeah, yeah. First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 25. Verse 23. I wanted to read this. You notice women who really help their husband. Because sometimes some women say, but Papa, me, my husband is good for nothing. If it's not that, I'm going to read it here. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 26, verse 23, 25, sorry. 1 Samuel 25, 23. The Bible says this. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that's why you're having a problem. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. I want us to see Anna. And let me read it because I'm ready to go. She was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Verse number 11. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of the maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant, will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord. All, verse 2, verse 12, all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. Meaning he's going to be a Nazareth. So what happened? Notice here, Hannah, so when he said, God, give me a male child. Give me a boy. Now, if you read the, the you understand the catch of the time, a boy was an heir to the father. So the, this woman was concerned about her husband. She knew if I die without it, that's why she could say, just give me a child. No, she was very specific. She said, give me a male child. She meaning that she was playing a covering or role in that area as far as her husband is concerned. Another way, God, we don't want this inheritance to be cut off. We want you, God, to give us a male child so this bozo here can make it in the next life. Because as for this bozo, he does not pray. He, you see, some men, they just think, oh, as long as I'm paying bills, bills is not enough. Life is spiritual first. Men are not saying it. Men, I don't know what's going on. My daughters, men are responsible. <laughs> Glory to God. I mean, I want you to know that. What happened? She began to pray. She began to pray and God granted the child. Now, when the male child came, do you think to, who, to whom the male child belonged? To the man. Because that was in his heir 
to the next life. So as a woman, when things are not working, you think your husband is not being at a place. Sometimes the Bible says, because men, the way they are created, they are created the image of God. You can't go tell him, oh, you know, you have to act. Look what Apostle is saying. No, you don't talk to men like that. They are not going to receive. They're going to hate me. So what you do, the Bible says, you need to win them with love. So when they are not getting it, you start praying. You start saying, darling, do you want us to pray? No, I don't want to pray. Okay, even tomorrow. You start praying, Amen. You start playing your role. As you begin to play a role, bit by bit, you start winning them. Now look at this, what happened to Abigail in 1 Samuel chapter number 1, 25. I'll finish. Give me a few minutes. I won't even finish everything, but... Let's read in because they're ready to go. 25, 20. Uh, Let's read in because they're ready to go. Now, when Abigail saw David, she dismounted quickly from the donkey fell on her face before David and bowed down to the ground. Verse 24. So she fell at his feet and said, On me, my Lord, on me let this iniquity be. And please, let your maid servant speak on your ears. Hear the words of your maid servant. Now who did all the crazy thing? It was her husband. And she, Nab, was it Naboth? What's his name again? The Naboth. What the name of uh, Abigail uh, husband again? Google. That's what you have a phone for. What's the name? Just Google my daughter. Just, I know you're going to Google. Just Google. <laughs> huh? Naboth something. Huh? No, no, no. Google, please. They know where time. Come on, Google quick. I'm waiting. Uh, what's his name again? So this man's name means a... Huh? Nabal. God bless you. Nabal. Nabal was a fool. Now David was coming to kill him. Because David was so good to him and was so kind to him, he never responded to this with the same kindness. David said, as long as God lives, this man is dead today. So when he was on his way, Abigail came, interrupted David. She fell on her knees. She said, you know what? Put it on me. In other words, I'm serving as a covering for my husband. So when you feel your husband, it's not because some men are very slow. Men are very slow. They don't get it. Do you know? Do you know? Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. But James, do you know? Do you know? Is a proven fact. Is a proven fact. When a woman comes to tell a husband, you know what? I'm leaving you today. I'm divorcing you. That's the first time the men think there's a problem. So a woman can, can be over it for the past four years. He's just living with you. Because some men think oh, a woman can give you his body, can give you cook for you, but his heart is not there. And you think everything is good, we are being intimate, she's cooking, her heart is not there. But the day just that devil gonna going to come upon your woman, she say, I'm leaving you now. Then the men say, okay, we can go for counseling. What you are trying to solve is a problem she has been dealing with for the past 10 years. So only when the, when the woman say it's over, then when you get it. That's why my daughters, listen to me. You, when that man is acting like Nebo, a fool, you start praying for them. Bring them the presence of God. Say, Father, put it on me. I pray for him. I cover him. Father, is a priest of my home. He's not doing his job. But Father, I pray. He's going to come to that understanding. He's going to understand his spiritual responsibility. Because as a man, your first, spiritual res- your first responsibility is spiritual. He's not paying bills. Because I came to realize, Mama, if everything, every spiritual thing is in place, money will come. Jobs will come. All this problem we have in our family, you find out it begins to go very, very uh, swiftly and softly. Why? Because you have put the priority in places. So when I when they say people of God, men can cover you. And your, your first spiritual covering is God. Then at home is a man. You know now, what's, what about the, 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 the orphans? When you're an orphan or you're a widow, God, 
this, this God becomes your covering. That's what I want you to see how important. To the point God said, me, I will defend the widow, I will defend the orphans. Why? Because they don't have any covering. God said, I'm going to step in first. So if you attack a widow, you attack God. You attack an orphan, you attack God. That's why the Bible says, if you give to a poor, you have lent to me. You give to a widow, you have given me money, so I'll bless you. That's why all the blessings is not always sought to apostle. Our, no, sometimes take your money, go to a place whereby there's a widow. There's an orphan. These people, they can't help themselves. They, you give them money. When they say, oh, God remembers you. I tell you that prayer a thousand times more than apostle. Because God defends, God hears their prayer. You know, God is always inclined toward the weak. And the widows are the orphan, they are the weak. Look what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 68, I believe. Let's read 68 verse 5. Then we're going to finish here. Uh, let's read it constantly. Ready, go. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows. Is what? A who? Uh, let's read again. Is what? A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows. Is God in the holy habitation. I mean, another word, God is saying, while I sit here, my eyes are over the orphans. My eyes are on the widows. Why? Because they can't cover themselves. Who's an orphan? An orphan, a person does not have a mother, either a father, or either way. So they, they lack that spiritual covering. So witches and wizards can come and attack them. The devil can come and attack them. God now is watching at them. It's if the devil try, I'll fight myself. Because you want to defend them. You want to protect them. Are you with me? Now, we're talking about the first spiritual coverings. What? God then, the family, family, we have a man and a woman, we go children. Then I want to close with this very quickly, men of God. Someone can say, but Apostle, me, I never used to have a covering. What am I going to do? You can have a man of God who can be your covering. And this thing is so sad, let's go to Hebrews 13, 17. It's so sad that in, 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 the, in the West, sometimes we are we are missing this thing. Hebrews chapter 13, I believe. Verse 17. I will read. There are a few scriptures here. Then I will close quickly. Ay, 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 I'm on the board. Let's read it. Uh, 13, uh, 13, 17. Sorry. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. For they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy not with grief, for that will be unprofitable for you. So the Bible is telling us there, we should be submitted to the leaders. God has given you a man of God, a woman of God. They can serve as a covering to you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2. Let's try that one. Shepherd, shepherd the flock of God. Ah, let's read it because it's already go. Shepherd the flock of God, which is you, serving as Overseer, no by compulsion, but willingly, not for. Not desire. The Bible says, shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serve as an overseers. So God has placed men of God as women of God as, as a covering for believers. So when we come to church, we need to understand, I might not have uh, someone praying for me, but I have a man of God, a woman of God looking after me. Let us go to uh, uh, Acts chapter 20 verse 28. I got too many. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Let's read in concert. Ready, go. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. So notice that God keeps speaking to, to leaders, speaking to uh, pastors, men of God, that God has given them the responsibility to look after the members. You, now if you're a pastor, you're a man of God, you can't live anyhow. You don't pray, you don't fast, people are getting sick in the church, you don't care, people are being confused, there is no money, church is going nowhere, you, do, you are not concerned, no, you must have a burden because God has placed, placed a mantle upon your life to cover that church. So any single person who's under the particular church supposed to be under your covering, they must experience the blessing of God over their lives because you are there. Amen. Now, 
Look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll jump a little things. Like I said, six weeks. Uh, that you see I'm all over the place. I'll jump. I want to show us something. Look at this. I want to show us uh, the strategy of Satan. I'll read one verse. Then I'll, I'll, I'll stop here. Because it's too many. I can't finish everything. Okay. Let's read in uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I'll do what? I'll strike what? I'll do what? Strike the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. Now listen to these people of God. If the devil wants to attack someone, listen to me, the first thing he will do, he wants to remove what? The covering. The shepherd there can be your man of God, can be your husband, can be God. So if he see, how am I going to attack this person? I'm going to destroy his life. A witch, any witch has sense. Before a witch attacks you, before a wizard, they come face in the realm of the spirit to see who is covering this person. If they see the covering is weak, they will try first, they will kill the one who's covering you. The pastor or the man of God, they destroy his life. When they destroy his life, then they can come, they begin to attack. That's why you notice most families. I don't know if you have noticed this before. You find out in certain families, especially in Africa, the mother died. Suddenly, children begin to die one after another, one after another. Or the man died, children begin to die one after another. Because it means this. In that family, the man or the woman, she was the one in charge. She was, you, she was as a covering of the family. So they'll make sure they will kill the woman first. After the woman is gone, then they start dealing with the children. In my family, it is my mother. In my father's house, there was a witchcraft you can't believe. My mom was telling me, when I was small, they brought witchcraft. My dad was there. He was telling me last year. I was sitting with them. He said, your dad is there. His people, they came in my house. They put witchcraft on your bed. I came to tell him, you are still a baby. I said, look what your people are doing. But they could not touch my family. Why? Because my mother. It's not because my mother was praying. My mother was, hey, she's a tough woman. She's short like this, a tough woman. Because she would talk. She, if she see like that, she start calling to them. Not to my son. No, she would talk. So they're afraid of her. So what they will do now in such families, they will make sure they kill the one who is serving the covering. When they kill the person, that's why the Bible said they will strike the shepherd first. They remove the covering first. Then the rest, they begin to collect. They begin to collect. You can see, oh, our sister died. We don't understand, Papa. Our brother died. We don't understand. They begin just to collect like that. Because why the covering is removed. So the first way the devil tried to remove the covering through death. Or he can remove the covering through what I call association. The devil can associate you with someone. And that person, because of their attitude, their lifestyle, will bring in a place whereby you remove the covering of God over your life. It's like Jonah. People were fine in the boat. They are going, they are where they are traveling. But when Jonah came, the storm came. Another way, there are certain people that come in your life, the covering is gone. Why? Because they talk negativity. They criticize men of God. Hey, we don't understand. Hey, this, uh, you know, they're always talking about men of God. You don't understand why we are doing that. They are trying to get you to remove your covering. After the coverings removed, the devil will strike you. Not only Jonah, look at Lot, the nephew of Abraham. In fact, Lot means covering. Can you say covering? The name Lot means covering. So when Lot was walking with God, the Bible said God never spoke to Abraham. But when Lot was separated from Abraham, God spoke to Abraham. So we need to understand there are certain people who come into our lives. They bring problems. They bring confusion. They bring all sorts of things. As a result now, we, we miss the blessing of the covering. 
because of what we are saying, because of our attitude, because of things like that. Are you with me? So I was talking about losing the covering of God through association. The third way you can lose the covering of God through offense. Now I'll finish with this one. I'll give some examples. You know what the devil does? Listen to me, Sister Lynn. What the devil would do, if he knows like this, because, listen, in the realm of the spirit, demons are so smart. Witches are so smart. We are the ones that are sleeping, but the devil knows who's being covered by who. You can be going there. The devil knows his covering is supposed to be here. He's going to finish you there. So what he will do now, when he sees you come here, he knows that your covering is here. He will try to make you to be offended. Something going to happen in the church. You get upset. Oh no, you know that church, I don't understand. You leave the church. That's what the devil wants. He wants to take you out of the covering. Because he knows, as long as you are there, you are under strong covering. can't attack you. can't take your children. So it's playing with... And then you are hearing all these things are being said. You say, I know, I don't want to do that anymore. And that church and this and that. You start talking. When you're talking like that, you get offended. You say, they will never see me there ever. But you don't understand. It's not the man of God who's losing. You are losing. Because you're no longer under covering. It's like a person who's under the umbrella or in the house. It, the, there's a storm, you can't feel the storm, you can't feel the sun. Now you get out of the house, there's a hurricane outside. You die. And that's what the devil does. He wants to use offense to get you to be offended. I'll give you an example. In this church, I thank God for some of you. Mama, God bless you. My daughter, God bless you. They've been in the church, they've seen us, we're hundreds here. Time, we're hundreds, and people start going. This man here, behind the camera, and his wife, I don't know if you understand. I almost lost them. <laughs> there was a sister in the church who was offended. And I don't know why, just she was offended. She started talking to my daughter. Where is she? My daughter here, her husband. And I just see, when I come here, I see they begin to change. It means that because offense is contagious. They start changing. I can be praying. Ah. Because now she's hearing things. And I, because I'm, I've been doing this for a long time, I check. I check things in the church. I know. If I know, but uh, T is offended. And then I see Sister Aquila, he starts acting funny. I'm just going to come and say, oh, have you seen Barati these days? Ah, oh, we've been hanging around last week. Offense. They've been talking. Now it's like hearing things. They got offended. It changed. You can't just be like, this is not them. Am I lying, son? They start talking to them. They just like me. Bit of arrogant resistance. Now listen to this. The devil is very smart. But God spoke to me already for, concerning them. I, I say, you ask them, if there are people who pursue in these cities, them, they become difficult. They start coming late to the church. They care. When they come, they're just going to hang around with that person. My wife and I prayed. We fasted every week. We followed them. Saturday, we're in their home. We finished. You remember? Saturday, we go to see them. Sunday after church. Because an offense is so powerful. The Bible said the root of, the root of offense is like a root on its trees, any evil thing will come. When someone is offended, they become bitter, they be become revengeful, they become, they become evil. I said, my wife was so heartbroken. I said, Leja, we pray, fasted, go to them. So I remember, you may even start missing church, I see something like that. Yeah, they wouldn't come, or if they come, you see them, they, normally, because we used to be quite a lot, uh, my daughter there, she would sit there, but I'm preaching, she's going to stand up with that particular person outside. She's mentoring them in bitterness. Because herself was bitter like what? I said, I can't lose this couple. If I, I don't say, if I lose the couple, it's no good. I prayed. I prayed. I fasted. Saturday, I go to their place. 
I talk with them. It didn't work. Sunday after church, sometimes they call me, we can't come because I see this bitterness. After service, I'll drive to Akimos with my wife. We are there. Every week I'm going, what bitterness? Because I knew what the devil does, he will use bitterness to take you out of covering. You'll notice there are a lot of people who left men of God. I always tell my son, okay, the problem is not leaving. The problem is what are you doing after you've left? They don't do anything. They go there. Before you know it, they say, oh, well, so we can be pastors. They become a movie. You're a pastor. How? <laughs> How? They be called themselves all these names. I mean, they are looking for, because the devil want to put them in a proper. Because when you call yourself a pastor, you are not ordained. Because you need to understand every office in the fivefold ministry, it has it has so demonic souls attached to it. There are demons only have pa- fight apostles. There are demons they only fight prophets. The demons they pa- fight pastors. Now you, you call yourself a pastor, you are not ordained. So you have invited to fight with demons, you are not protected against this. You give people like this two, three years, you find them, find their lives. Why? They are no longer under a covering. Why? Because of bitterness. That's why when there's a problem in the church, you must talk. When something you don't like, you say, Papa, that's why I've mentored this man. I told him, if there's something you don't like, talk to me. Something we heard out there, ask me. You can't be with me here. You can talk to me, and you're going to know about my life out there. Talk to me. Ask me, Papa, don't end this. I will tell you. After a while, prayer and fasting brought them here. Don't mind him, he's, he's standing behind the camera. They may, I did this for them. They left for no reason. Bitterness. No, look at this. Not only a church member can be, become bitter, even a man of God. Because when you're a man of God, you become bitter. You can't pray. For that particular sister, you can't pray. I remember I got a friend of mine. He prayed for all these couples all night they got married. They start talking bad about him now. They're married, got their children. He said to me, Apostle, unless God did not call me, unless I did not pray for them, if me, I put my chest on the floor, I pray for them, and if somehow those marriages are connected to my prayer, I say, don't talk like that. He says, it's too late. I've already spoken to God. I say, you can't talk. He said, yeah, I told them. I said to God, if, I did, if this, uh, these marriages... It's just coincidence that fun, but if somehow it's connected to my prayer, I withdraw my prayers. You know what happened? These people begin to divorce. Probably in their home. I said to the man of God, you can't talk like that. Why? Offense. So there are two ways. Not only a member can be offended, a man of God. If you don't deal with offense, you no longer pray for your people. You don't cover them. Oh, they say this about me. They go, no, you are men of God. You are called. You, are, you, are, you have to take all that. You need to accept all that. People say things about me. I, I say, but they were close here. They knew. I told them, but they have said things. But what you do, you trust God. You keep your heart pure. So this advice, if God has called you as a pastor, you are called to cover people. You can't allow your members, they are sick. Your members, they are confused. You, you need to ask yourself. You have to go to God. God, you call these people and you place them under me. But why are these things happening? You must ask yourself questions. God will give you answers. If you are a pastor, don't waste your time over people who are not under your covering. Because some pastors, I used to be so naive. They will tell me, someone doesn't even come to my church. They have a problem. Me, I'll go there. I will fast. No, I will fast and pray if I see the person I'm praying for is connected to someone who's in the house. I can go pray for mama's family. I can pray for bra- 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 t- family because they're in the house. They are connected in the house. Because your anointing, your grace, what God has given you is only going to work for people who are submitted under that grace. Because the anointing you are not under, the anointing you cannot obey it will never work for you. That's why certain people say, I, I don't go to that, I go to that church, I don't even see anything. There is no miracle. You, you are the same person, a man of God talks to you, preaches the word to you. And you are the same person, go out there, gossip about the man of God. Talk bad about the man of God. And you want his anointing to work for you. It's not going to work. 
So, as a man of God, woman of God, listen to me, some of you are calling the ministry. You need to know, you only cover the people and you spend your prayers and fasting over the people God has given you. Because I'm not accountable to people God not give to me. Remember Luke chapter number 10. The Bible says when the good Samaritan took that man who was broken. The Bible said they, they went to give him to the innkeeper. And then they give two denarii. They give the money to the innkeeper. That innkeeper is a pastor. They say, okay, you look after him. I'll give to you whatever is needed so you can look after him. Me, I'm res- responsible for this few God has given me. Now, if you decide, I don't want to post anymore, you go. I'll ask you, is there any problem? There's no problem. I'll let you go, but you're not under my covering. Because what? I'm not accountable for your soul where you're not under me. Am I making sense? Is it clear? And that is spiritual covering. People God want us to understand spiritual covering is real. And spiritual covering, it works. In the realm of the spirit, the devil knows that. Before he attacks you, before he does everything, he always makes sure who is covering you. Now my question is, who is covering you? Some of us, you have 10 pastors. You have pastors, you have your own special groups, you have your, you know people like, you, you don't understand. I, I was so shocked. I was somewhere in America. I'll, I'll close with this story. I was somewhere in America. Can you imagine a pastor friend told me, he said, Paul, I'm so heartbroken. He's working with someone, his spiritual son. And then he was invited by another American pastor. He said, oh, a friend come. I'm going to ordain some of my sons. I want you to come. So this man is going just to go to his friend's church to see the ordination. They are ordaining and praying for leaders. When I arrived there, guess what? His spiritual son is being ordained there. They are praying for him to become a pastor. But yet his spiritual son in the church. So I think it was just God wanted him to go to the invitation. Can you imagine? If he did not go, he have never have known that this man is already ordained. He's carrying different mentals. That's how you find in ch- our churches, they're so confused. You can be here, you're carrying somebody else's mantle. Uh, because you carry someone's mantle, it's a different anointing. We try to mix things, nothing is working. Why? Because we don't understand spiritual covering. But I pray for you that from today you understand this. I pray for you that you put your life in order. And I'm not saying just come under me. Don't know what, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. You know me better than that. Whoever you are, you know is accountable for you, submit to them fully. Recognize them fully. Honor them fully. Support what they are doing fully. Don't gossip about them. Don't talk bad about them. Don't criticize them. If you know this, how many people? I went somewhere, someone's telling me, Oh, Papa, you know, we are all your daughters. We are all preaching online. I told her, I said, you are not my daughters. I didn't tell you go preach online. I don't know what you are doing. I don't know what you are saying. Oh, Papa, yes. You are not my daughter. We are, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. But don't say, I'm not taking the responsibility of you preaching. I don't know what you are preaching. I have Zoom. I teach the word. You don't listen to what I teach. So what are you teaching there? So people have fathers here. Another father in Kenya. When they are sick, they send their seed in a uh, uh, prophet in Uganda. When they're in trouble, they sow their seed and another prophet in South Africa. When they don't know what to do, they will say, no, we're going to go on a mountain. When we go to Tanzania, they have all over the place. And you wonder why I can't see the hand of God. But today, people, God wants you to know, it does not matter how small or big your, your spiritual father is, you submit under that covering. And when you submit, God is going to honor you. My father is over 90 something. Actually, last week on Thursday, the Lord spoke to me. He said to me, I'm about to take your father. I said, What? Yeah. I said, I'm about to take your father. I was so heartbroken. So, I, um, I think the Lord knows me. Of course, He knows me. He knows dynamic, it will be very hard for me. So I need to prepare him. So I spoke to my dad yesterday and, and the other day before yesterday or so. And I'm, in my spirit, I'm hearing, 
The Lord said, going to take him any time from now. My father, I remember when I was small. You know when you are small, you see your father is always big, tall. But now my father is frail. He's tired. I can't believe they sent me the photo. It just moved my heart. I said, this is my dad. My dad used to be very, you know, very fair. He used to wear the short, white short. And then, you know, he used to grow up with the, the whites, the Belgium, you know. So, so, ah, my dad, I'm looking at my dad, this old man. And they sent me a photo. When I talk to him, you can just see slurred. He said, so, so how are you? He just spent my hand. And he said to me, just send me $50. Oh, I don't have $50 to send my dad. I said 100, I said that, no, you don't need 100. I know someone around there, they can go my, my sister when I say, how much you want? Sound, sound, sound. <laughs> then, okay, I said, Dad, no, that is not you. Someone is telling you, you need 50. <laughs> and he started laughing and we laughed. But what I'm trying to say, you know, he's still my father. Mm. No matter how weak my father is, I still honor him. Mm-hmm. I will never be bigger than my father. If I become a father to their have children, my father becomes a grandfather. Mm-hmm. If my children become children, my father becomes a great grandfather. You will never be like your father. Mm. Please just pray. Thank you for listening to this message. If you were blessed by what you just heard and wish to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in your son Jesus Christ and that he died for my sins and was raised from the dead for my justification. I therefore confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life and I receive eternal life into my spirit and I am born again. Thank you Father in Jesus name. If you just said this prayer please reach out to us at kli.org.au or any of our social media platforms. God bless you.